Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Aurora, which is the Universal Blues image that is their KDE specific, it's, and we're going to see how wonderful it is. Before we start today's video, though, I'd like to take a minute and ask you to please hit that thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and that notification button. That way you know when we drop a new video. The interesting thing that we we'll want to mention about the Aurora distribution is that I am calling it the Nick OS killer. Why? One simple reason. If you've played with Nick's for any time, obviously you've got to be a tinker to play with it, but if you play with Nick's for any time, you'll know that the install packages on Nick OS is difficult because you have to edit a configuration file instead of just going into your terminal and just typing in said name package management and then installing it yeah you can't install it globally this is immutable this distribution is immutable just like nick immutable well nix is immutable ish this is actually immutable okay you can it's read only on the system core files uh, you can install to them globally but for the most part, you can't go in and edit any configuration files or anything like that. This distribution is great for new to Linux users because it offers the stability that you want in Linux, the reliability that you want in Linux, ease of use that you want in Linux. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. But let's go ahead and log in. And we're going to type in my super secret password. Uh, it uses the Anaconda installer. And then I want to take you to the web page to show you a few things on their web page. So we're going to wait till this logs in and then we will go to their web page. So let's open up Firefox. We're going to universalblue.org. This is their web page. This right here, the quick rundowns, is showing you all the different, like I said, oh, Ucore, that's the other one. So you have Aurora right here. You have Bazite right here. This is their gaming centric one. And then you have Bluefin, which is the GNOME derivative of it. Then they have Ucore, which is an OCI base image of Fedora Core OS. This is their server image. And so then they've got base images right here. And then I believe you can create a custom image right here using their web page. So say you want to download one of these. Okay, you pick which one you want to download. Let's go to the Aurora. I want to show you. This is where it's important. It's going to navigate you to get Aurora.dev, right? So down here, this tells you about what awesome, simply delightful, the speed and reliability. Like I said, zero maintenance. All updates are automatic, system-wide, so it does its own thing. Hardware support, one thing to note is it comes with NVIDIA G, uh, GPU drivers already and also port for ASUS and service devices. So therefore, your hybrid graphics cards are already enabled and all that good stuff. This is the important part. You, say you want to download the ISO, you come here, you select either ASUS, Framework Laptops is supported. That's awesome. So we're going to click Desktop Laptop, right? Then you're going to pick your GPU. Awesome. So you can pick Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA. We're going to go with AMD. That is my GPU. And then this is important. This is a cool little, I mean, they've paid attention to every detail for end, for the end users. So if you're a developer, you click on here, you click yes or no. You have to select one. And then now you can download your image. So I've shown you on screen how to get your image. And that is just as easy as one, two, three. If you don't know the KDE panel, let's run down. Application launcher here. Favorite, right next to it are your favorite goodies. Over here is your system tray, which has your notification center as well as other input things. What's nice is they have the Wayland to X11 video bridge so that you can actually screen share, you know, like Discord and all those other wonderful apps that you may want to share your screen on. And then they have their calendar right here. So that is a look at the panel. So now let's take a look at what's going on in here. So under development, they have Kate for graphics, things to note, or Gwen View and Ocular. Internet, they have Firefox, they have a VNC viewer. This is, as you can see, Vanilla Arch, and they have a Thunderbird client. Under, uh, so they have, under multimedia, I installed Caden Live OBS and VLC playing with this. Uh, for Office, they have no Office suite at all. Fantastic. I think people should install their own because, quite frankly, uh, not everybody uses LibreOffice. And that seems to be the default that everybody wants to install. For settings, they have firewall. They got input remapper and system settings, which system settings is, an, is a standard uh, KDE settings. For system category, they have, see here, they have firewall installed. They have info center. They've got console. 
they've got the system update. This is where you click to update your system. But I'm going to show you something else they use that is even more powerful. They have aliases that you can use in terminal for those of you that are that are you know terminal warriors. And the utilities they've got Box Buddy, which is really really cool because it is basically. Let's go ahead and fire it up. As you can see, this is a Docker front end container, kind of like Podman or whatever for managing your container. I have an Arch container installed. As you can see, if you go right here, under utilities, you click right here. This is your Arch terminal, and it's going into the distro box, launching distro box. And we're now in distro box. So if I do this Lunar install, it is not. So if I do sudo, let's go ahead and make this bigger. Or I mistyped something. Sudo and let's say Pac-Man. Oh, not underscore, sorry. And it's going to install Thuner. We're going to hit yes. And right now it's downloading and installing Thuner. Pretty quick. Now this is to install applications in DistroBox. And you can install many different ones and I'll show you how that works. So now if I type in Thunar. There's Thunar. That's running on Arc inside of Universal Blue's Aurora. Check that out. That is pretty cool. That is a look at the distro box. Say you want to install one, right? So you go back to your uh, box buddy, right? And you hit this little plus icon over here at the top, over here on the top left. And then you want to name, let's say, let's do, what's a good one? Open Sousa. Not South. Sousa. And then you click right here in this drop down, and then you want to scroll down. I think you want to type in, you can search for Open Seuss Tumbleweed right here. The latest. Create. Now it's going to create it. Okay, so there we go. Now it is done. So now we can close Box Buddy out of here, right? And let's go over here to this to the thing. And let's go and let's see. Open SUSE terminal right here. And so now we're in Open SUSE. So if we do sudo C Y P P E R update. So there we go. It did an update. It found that it's up to date and there's no need to do anything. So it's good to go. So there you go. So that is how you can actually use your distro box very easily in this. And that's one of the key things that they. They mentioned in here the other thing because it's immutable how do i install said packages right well let's see here so you want to install a package globally right this is one of the one of the two caveats of installing packages in here that is far easier than nick os as stated earlier it just the downside is their package manager rpm osprey take forever so what you want to do is you want to type in rpm oh i gotta get on here so let's do rpm dash o s t r e e base install and then let's do vlc for the package i'm going to hit enter now it's going to check out the tree and doing its thing and it's going to want to install it but it takes a while so i'm going to pause this video and then resume when it's completely installed okay so here it just got done checking the the repos as you can see all the different repos it looked at it resolved the dependencies and now it's running pre scripts and post scripts. And now it's doing post transcript. This takes a minute. So we're going to pause it here again. By the way, to do what it did so far has been about a minute. Okay, it just finished doing all that. As you can see right here, it took three minutes and 52 seconds to install an actual application. That's a long time. That's why I think that doing the flat pack, like it already comes enabled out of the box, too, or using. A distro box which by the way i forgot to mention when i showed you the box buddy that you can actually export whatever program you want at a distro box and actually 
make it into a launcher on your application menu. So that is your viable options for doing it much faster because OPR, uh, RPM OS3 takes forever, but it is installed globally. Now, one of the things that you have to do is you got to do a system control reboot right here in order for it to take change and be applied globally. As you can see, if we go to multimedia, it is not here. So let's do that real quick, like it in a hurry. I'm going to copy this to avoid my horrible typing. I'm going to paste and we're going to hit enter and it's going to reboot. Once it's done, I will resume the video. Okay, let's go ahead and log right in. And so now we're going to go over here to multimedia and there's our VLC media player. So now that is installed globally. How do we know? Well, very simple. You open up your terminal once again. You go here. Um, we'll make this larger. And then we're going to type in flat pack. And this is going to list all the flat packs that are available in this distribution that came out of the box. Which they got flat steel, box buddy, warehouse. Warehouse is a flat pack manager. Flat steel is a, a tool that you use to uh, give permissions to different flat packs and set uh, uh, launch uh, options and that kind of stuff with, uh, with your flat packs. And of course, you got your Mesa uh, for gaming and all that kind of stuff. So this is what's in here. So as you can see, there is no VLC. Also, if you look, uh, if you go here to multimedia, you'll see OBS and Caden Live. Those are not flat packs either. I installed using OP RPM OS. So there's that. Now to show you flat pack and how fast flat pack is as far as installing applications, you're going to want to run flat pack install and then let's type in teleprompter prompter there we go we're going to hit yes we're going to hit yes again just like that it's installed so now you can close out of this because the cool thing about flat packs is it it adds them right automatically to your launcher so you go here and you go to utilities. Uh, I can't find it. Let's do this. Tell it, and there it is right there. And it opens up and then here, as soon as it launches is what it looks like. Uh, so that is a look at, at how to install packages in here uh, via globally or just user land. That is user land and it's flat pack is always a user land. So to note any important packages, that, I mean, they've done vanilla KDE as you can see. They've got in here system update and system monitor. Now system update, this is a launcher that they've made for updating the system automatically. Top grade is what it is. So uh, that's kind of cool. Now, what I want to show you is the other cool part. Uh, if you're a terminal warrior and you do a lot of stuff constantly in terminal, well, they've made some aliases right here. As you can see, it's you just, that is the first one. And then you give it the command. So let's type in, available commands we don't know what they are so let's type in this huge you you just choose right here right just like this i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste it we're going to hit i'm going to take away that underscore line we're going to hit enter now these are the different commands that are available but of course it gives you in the right hand side install fleet which is a set of packages for brew okay but you can go right on up here all the way up to the top, which is update. Uh, let's just try update, whatever. Just type in update right here. Hit enter, and it's doing the updates right now. There you go. It did all the updates for everything. That's a look at Ujust. That is another cool tool that they've implemented in here that is fantastic. And so it's one that I would definitely recommend. I keep hitting the Windows button. That's how you toggle your application launcher for shortcut wise. Keyboard shortcut. So that is a look at that. What else is in here that it would be of mention? Um, I think that's about it. That is a look at Universal Blues Aurora Edition. I term it, and I'm definitely looking at it as a Nix OS killer because uh, it's got the same exact reliability, stability, and um, you can just set it and forget it. Install what you need, and you can use it, and it's great. You don't have to update. You can turn off updates. You can turn them on. Uh, you can update whenever you want on it and it's easier to actually install applications and that I think is the caveat that makes it more desirable. 
you could be a new to Linux user, as I st stated, and use this distribution out of the box quite easy, easily. The documentation is there. Uh, if you want questions on it, uh, you can certainly hit us up in our Discord, uh, and you can you know, ask questions there. People can help you there. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say other than go download Aurora, or if you want Bluefin, if you're a GNOME fan, download it. If you're a gaming fan, Bazazite, go have fun with them. Enjoy them. Y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on listening. Stay blessed. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the very next one.